Hi, this is Andy Knox of Tangent, and this is a quick introduction to the support we've built so far for Tangent panels to be used with the Unreal Engine Editor. I'll start the tour by showing you how the Tangent Mapper looks when running with Unreal. Note that I'm using a Wave 2 panel for this video, as this allows us to see all the features on a single screen of the mapper. But of course, all the functions discussed also apply to our other panels in our range, including our apps. Hopefully, you're already familiar with the way that tangent panels work with modes, banks and alternate functions. If not, then I'd suggest you take a look at our Introduction to the Tangent Mapper video before continuing. So let's get started by first taking a look at how we've chosen panel modes when controlling Unreal. We decided it would be best to have modes which match the object types that the panel recognises. These modes are Light, Camera, Post-Process Volume and Colour Correct Region. As I click through each mode you can see that most of the control switch function to operate properties which relate to that object type. There's also a Sequencer mode for some additional functions when you're using the Sequencer. The first mode in the list Editor mode is there for object types which don't have a predefined support for properties other than transforms. I'll cover some of the controls in each mode shortly, but first let's see what happens when I click on objects in the editor. When I click on a light, you'll see that the mapper follows the panel into light mode. If I select a camera, then the panel and mapper switch to camera mode. But if I click on the color calibrator, then the panel jumps to editor mode, as that object type doesn't have a dedicated mode. This tracking behaviour can be overridden from the function keys on the panel. F1 to 6 will force the panel to change while leaving the object that's selected unchanged on the GUI. An example of when this might be useful is if we wanted to move the post-process volume from the panel, but the controls for moving objects aren't mapped in the post-process mode, as they're all used for colour grading properties. This is only temporary though, as when you select a different object, the tracking behaviour resumes. If you prefer to disable the tracking for a time, then you can do so by pressing this button. Now you can select objects in the editor and the panel mode won't follow, so you'll need to use the panel's function keys instead. But I will turn it back on again now. We offer a way to quickly select between different objects from a panel. This should be useful when you're working with a number of objects which you are frequently switching between. This feature is mapped to the alternate function of the first six soft buttons on the Wave 2 panel in all modes. To program a button to select the current object, just hold it down for two seconds. The display will then update to show the object's name. I'll program another button to select a different object, and then a third. Now I can quickly switch between these three objects right from the panel. I can overwrite a selection by just programming it again. I can also clear all the program selections by pressing this button. We'll now take a look at manipulating object properties from the panel starting with transforms. If I select this colour calibrator then the panel will switch to editor mode as it's not one of the object types that the panel recognises. Editor mode concentrates on controls for object transformation, both on the trackables and the knobs. The controls on the left move an object's location. In this mode, the trackable and the knobs are both mapped to the same properties, so you may prefer to use one or the other depending on what you're trying to achieve. Controls in the middle change rotation. The reset buttons on the knobs and the two resets associated with each trackable will do the same thing as pressing the reset button on the GUI. The controls on the right operate scale, with the rightmost knob set to scale all. All the transform controls have the same function, but with different sensitivities mapped to the standard and alternate state. Normally the controls are set to coarse, so small control movements result in quite large changes. The alternate controls are set to more fine control, so with this you can achieve more accuracy. When you're moving general objects around, the trackable is mapped to movements in the XY plane 
and the dial or ring changes the z-axis. You can switch from local space to world space from this button. We've also added two other coordinate systems to choose from. The first is camera space. The panel remembers which camera you last selected and will move the object using that camera's orientation as the coordinate system. We hope that this should make it easier to manipulate objects when they're being viewed through a camera. I'll demo this by using knobs rather than the trackable, just so that it's clearer to see what's happening. If I just X, then the object moves towards the camera. If I just Y and Z, then the object moves in the plane perpendicular to the camera's direction. The other option we've added is viewport space. This works just like camera space, but instead the object moves relative to the orientation of the editor viewport. I'll now select a light so the panel automatically switches to light mode. If we look at the mapper then you'll see that the knobs have now changed to controlling various light specific properties. The left two trackables are still set to move and rotate the light, but the right ball is now set to change the colour. There are five knob banks in light mode. The leftmost four controls are the same in all banks, as they apply to most light types. Bank 1 also includes extra controls which apply to most light types, hue, saturation and RGB. Bank 2 includes the two angle controls for directional lights. Bank 3 includes the attenuation radius and source controls for point lights. Bank 4 includes the angle controls for spotlights. And Bank 5 includes the height, width and barn door controls for rectangular lights. If I operate some controls, you'll see the light move, rotate, and change colour. You can control the colour either by RGB from these three knobs, hue and saturation from these two knobs, or colour wheel style from the right trackable and the dial. As in the edit mode, the standard settings give coarse control, while the alternate settings give fine control. The up and down arrow keys are mapped to change the knob bank, so I can quickly step back and forth through the five banks to find the one that I want, appropriate for the light type that I'm working on. So if I select this spotlight, then I'll step through to the bank which contains the spotlight angle controls. We've added some experimental functions on the second button bank of the light mode, where you can add light objects to the level. The controls to change the button banks are on the alternate function of the up and down arrow keys, as this is the only mode that has more than one button bank. Now I'll select a camera and the panel will change to camera mode. In this mode you can see that the knobs have changed to controlling the position of the camera with the knobs labelled using traditional cinematography terminology for camera motion. This is just the same as controlling the camera object using XYZ moves and rotates in local or camera space. However, these controls are fixed to always operate movement relative to the camera's orientation, regardless of the transform reference space setting. However, the trackable uses XYZ controls and responds to the transform reference space setting. The other thing which differs for cameras is the orientation of the axes applied to the trackable. While other objects use Unreal's native Z-up coordinate system, with the trackable controlling X and Y, cameras are set to use a Y-up coordinate system by default. If you'd like to change this, then it can be done easily from the mapper. You just change the combined mapping of the three trackable axes to be actor rather than camera, and you'll see that the axes swap over. Camera mode also has three other camera specific properties defined on these three knobs. Selecting the post process volume again brings up the associated mode, where you can see that just a few of the many color grading properties have been assigned to controls with global offset gamma and gain assigned to the three trackables. 
This might be a good time to point out that not all controls which we've added are assigned in this default map. As you can see, there are many more colour grading functions which can be chosen to be mapped to either the trackables or knobs, either by right-clicking on the control or by selecting from the menu in the control mapping window. I'll gloss over the colour correct region mode as it's extremely similar to the post process mode with all the colour grading properties available to map to the panel as you wish. Finally we have the sequencer mode with some useful functions mapped to the soft buttons and to the transport controls. You can play and stop the timeline, step through the sequence frame by frame using the inch buttons or the jog wheel, You can zoom the timeline with the jog wheel while holding the ALT button and you can jump back and forth with the inch buttons whilst holding ALT. However the transport key functionality is also available in all modes and not just sequencer mode. So when you've clicked on an object to manipulate and the mode has therefore changed away from sequencer you can still control the timeline. So we've now covered all the modes and functions which are assigned to the default map which is provided with our Unreal plugin. I've also mentioned how there are more functions available to map from the menus in the mapper. However, you can also control properties which don't yet feature in the mapper's menus by using the training feature. For example, I could be dealing with a camera and feel that I'd like the panel access to, let's say, the diaphragm blade count property. First, I need somewhere to put it, so let's create a second bank of soft knobs and click into mapping them. Now, I choose the knob which I'd like to map and from the menu in the control mapping window select Train this control. Both the panel and the mapper now indicate that this control is in training mode. Next, I find the property in the Unreal GUI which I'd like to control and give it a waggle using the mouse. The full name of the property should appear as the custom control identifier and a shortened version as the display label. The mapper will take a guess at the min, max and step values, but if the feel seems wrong when you turn the knob, you can manually set some better ones. For this one I know the range is from 4 to 16 and the step size is 1, so if I set those values then the knob will take one revolution for full range when set to coarse. That's everything that I'd like to cover for today. We do also offer control of Unreal Blueprints via OSC, but our OSC support will be the topic of another short video. Hopefully you found this introduction helpful to get started testing the power of controlling Unreal from a panel. Please remember that this control also works from our Element VS apps for iOS and Android, both the full versions and the time-restricted free versions. So even if you don't yet have any tangent hardware, you can still try things out from an app. We'd love to hear what you think about our integration, if we've missed anything crucial, could do something in a better way, or if we've got anything wrong. So please send an email to our beta support with your thoughts. Details below. Thanks for watching.